let's take a moment to talk about strings. So I have a JavaScript file here and I've declared three variables string one two and three and I've created the contents for these three and I've assigned the contents to these three variables in three different ways. In the first one I'm instantiating a string object. I'm saying create a brand new string object and this is the contents to pass into that string. Second version I'm taking this value and I'm converting it into a string. Now it already is a string so it's not going to do anything to it but this is a second way that you can create a string. And third way this is the string literal. Now with all of these string methods that we're going to be working with when they start with a string and then you call the string method you can put a variable in front of them the variable can be created in any of these ways or you can actually put a string literal in front of them so let's uh, start off with a couple of simple methods the two uppercase and two lowercase method now if I take str1 I can call two uppercase or I can just type out a string and call to uppercase or to lowercase. Either one's going to work. So you can see here, in order to call the method, I have to first have an object that's the correct type. If this is a string object, I can call the string method. This is a string object, this is a string object. So after either one of them, the variable or the literal, I can call the method. Now, neither of these is going to affect this original object. What they're going to do is they're going to pass back after they've run, they're going to give me back or return a new string. So it will take Toy Story, convert it to all uppercase, and then the variable result is going to have this written in all caps. Same thing here. This will pass me back the result of this method. So if I console log str1 and then result, we'll be able to see that it didn't actually affect the original variable. And for the second one, we'll just put result2. We're not going to bother putting the string in there. There we go. So, string one was a string object, Toy Story, and there is the result, all in caps. And, oh, sorry, I used lowercase here. I was expecting uppercase, but I used the two lowercase method. So, the result two variable has this name here, and the two capitals are, have been converted to lowercase. So, there's the full name in lowercase. All right, now. If you need to look up these methods, what we want is the Mozilla Developer Network is the best place to go for references to these kinds of things. Um, Mozilla is the organization that builds the Firefox browser and they have an absolutely fantastic website for developers. Anything you want to know about JavaScript, they have it in here. So I've gone into the string section there's a search box here. I just searched for string or substring. It brought up this method for me. Down the side here, the left hand side, here's a list of all of the methods. And the word prototype here just means that every single string is going to have this method. So it doesn't matter which string you're using, it's going to have all of these methods. So you can search down the side here for other methods. And this first paragraph is the description of what it's going to do. The method returns a subset of a string. This is the very important keyword that you need to look for, returns. When you see returns, that means that the method is not affecting the original string. It's giving you a new string that is the result of the method. So very important to pay attention to that. You'll find as you work with different objects and different methods you come in here, sometimes it'll return undefined, meaning 
okay, it's not giving you anything back. Sometimes it'll give you a true or false to tell you whether or not it worked. And sometimes it gives you a new version of the object that you were working with. So be very careful to see what the method is returning. The substring method. So if you have a string variable or literal and you call the substring method, you're passing in a starting position. So this is the index of the characters in the string. So if you look at a string and you think of the very first and you numbered all the characters, you think of the very first character as being position zero, then one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Every character in the string is numbered. This is the position, the index. So if I put a zero here, it means I'm starting at the very first string. And then the second parameter is the ending position. So it will go here we go. Index end, optional, an integer between 0 and the length of the string, which specifies the offset into the string. So what does that mean? It means starting at this number and ending just before the second number. So if I had, let's say, 0 and 4, what that means is start at position 0 and take 0, 1, 2, 3, but not 4 if 4 is this number. So everything up to and include, but not including that number. Now another thing to pay attention to when you're looking at the syntax examples that they give, the square brackets mean optional. When you see the square brackets, you'll notice that the comma is inside there as well. It means you can specify just the starting position or starting position and an ending position for substring. So this second parameter for this method is an optional one. We don't have to put it there. All right, let's do an example with that. So str, okay, let's make a new results and say we're going to take str2, which is the string Wally. And we're going to call substring. And let's try to extract this hyphen. So starting at position 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And up to, but not including, 5. I'll run this again. There we go. There's my hyphen. So that's what the substring does. Now there's three different methods that can be used to extract bits and pieces of strings. One is substring, where you specify the starting and the ending. One is substr, where you specify the starting and the length. So if I run this again, exact same result. And there's another one called slice, which you specify different parameters to get different parts of the string. I'm going to leave that one to you to look up on MDN. Index of is another method for strings. This one only requires one parameter. There's an optional second one, but the one parameter that is required is a string. I'm going to be searching inside of this string for this one. And what it's going to give me back is the position of this within here. Run it again. Four. That was the position of the hyphen inside of here. So index of starts looking at the left hand side, reads through until it finds the first instance of this. If you were to say last index of well, in this case, it's going to give me the exact same thing. Let's say if we went to look for, in Toy Story, if we looked for an O, lowercase o, there's two of them in here. Six. That is this second O over here. If I said index of, what I'm going to get is one. So zero, one. So index of, last index of, just has to do with which end of the string it starts searching at. Um, there's a concat method.
let's say you have a bunch of different strings that you want to add together. Let's say I wanted to put these three movie names together and have spaces in between them. So I can say concatenate string one and then a space and then string two and then a space and then string three. And you'll notice I put a string literal here. I didn't want to add this to any other string. I just wanted to start with a blank string, an empty string, and then add all these things in there. So let's clear this out, we'll run this again. And I'm going to comment, or I'm going to remove these two so we don't have to see those results every time. There we go. So, Toy Story, Wally, Cars. If I wanted to put commas in here, I doesn't I don't have to just put one character in. There we go. Toy Story, comma, Wally, comma, cars with the space in there as well. So concat is a grist, another way of combining strings. Um, you can combine strings with the plus sign, just using concat is a little bit faster under the hood. So that's an introduction to string methods bunch of things to be aware of. You can use string literals or you can use variables in front of the methods. You can create strings in different ways. You have the string and then you call the method and the MDN site is an excellent place to go to look up all of these different things.